Sun's going down and you're clocking in. Here's some things that only Night Shift will understand. Welcome to Paranormal Night Shift, your home to all things that go bump in the night. You have a paranormal story that nobody believes? Send it in, because this is where fan submitted stories get told. I can't wait to tell this one. It covers a topic that I absolutely love, so let's jump right in it. Cryptozoology, Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, the Jersey Devil, the Dover Demon. What are they? And why have so many people for years reported to be able to see them? One or two sightings in one or two locations you could easily write off. But stories come in all across the nation about this guy right here. From Florida to California, from skunk apes to yetis, everybody has a Bigfoot story. Are they an ancient race that evolution forgot? Are they a hybrid race that evolution's evolved on? Or can we go as far and say that they're not from this planet at all? JD writes in, I'm an avid hunter. I have been my entire life. I grew up playing in the woods of North Carolina, Appalachian Mountains to be exact. Most people take vacations to relax, not me. I'm taking vacations to hike through the Appalachian Trail. I've been saving up for three months and I couldn't wait to do this trip. You should never hike alone and I didn't plan on it, but my girlfriend rolled her ankle the week before we were supposed to leave and she was adamant that I should do this because we had talked about it forever. So, even though rather reluctantly, it was just me and my dog Max, we took off early for the trail that morning and had a wonderful day of hiking. Beautiful weather, you couldn't ask for anything more. It was bear season, so I took the proper precautions. I hung my food up in the tree, and it was time for a little R&R. &R. It must have been a little after midnight, Max is waking me up, and he's not waking me up growling like there's something out of the tent, he's waking me up whimpering like he's frightened. What's well, alright boy, what's wrong? But as soon as I was getting him calmed down, the loudest bang I ever heard came from outside the tent. It shook the ground. It sounded like a whole tree had just been uprooted and thrown. And on for what seemed like hours, I was so afraid. But do I get out of the tent to go see what's going on or do I stay in the safety of the cloth canvas tent? All night long, the pounding and the knocking continued until finally it was sunrise. It was quiet for the first time in hours. Reluctantly, I opened the tent because even if I wanted to get out of there, I still couldn't stay in my tent. I peeked out of my tent and I saw the absolute carnage that was our campsite. 12, maybe 13 trees completely uprooted and stacked on top of each other. They were perfectly stacked as if some sort of logging company came in throughout the night and cut them down, but they weren't cut down. They were just lifted out, roots and all. Max caught something scent. I, I started to smell it too. It, it was like a thousand skunks all sprayed at the same time. And then I saw it. And then I saw it. He was huge. If he was nine feet tall, he was 12 feet tall. He was as wide as anything I'd ever seen. He stood on two legs and had long arms and ape-like features, but a face. He did not look like anything I'd ever seen before. He let out this primeval growl and started charging at me. I had had Max since he was a puppy and it was his job to protect me. And that's what he did that day. I'd never seen him like that, but whatever generational canine that was still in him was still there. And Max fought for not only his life, but for mine. Max bit and clawed at the beast, but the beast was so huge, Max, he never stood a chance. But he fought long enough for me to get back into the tent and get my firearm. I unloaded on the beast, but it didn't do anything. It just threw Max to me like he was scraps and walked off. With my tent and everything, I carried Max on my shoulders and walked all the way back to the car, always looking behind me in case the beast came back. I have no idea why it chose to attack us. I hear several stories about Bigfoot being a very friendly creature, but whatever we did made it very mad. I knew nobody would believe this story, but I had Max's body in the back of my truck and I had to bury him and show my respects. My girlfriend and I held a ceremony for him in our backyard, buried him. He was a hero dog. He saved my life. I still go hiking quite often, but ever since then, I learned my lesson. Don't spend the night somewhere you don't know and never hike alone. JD, I absolutely love that story. We're sending you a paranormal night shift sticker and a, a Bigfoot sticker. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Tell me in the comments. Is he a friendly creature? Is he a violent creature? Or is he like the rest of us and just wants to be left alone?